Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks, Matt. Too. Um, mm -hmm. I'm Hamel, uh, and my colleague Moshe is also on the call. So, everybody. We'll, we'll, in this talk, we'll go over uh, our findings and uh, importance of congestion control for large scale rocky into deployment. Um, what I'll do is initially I'll kick it off and then hand it to Moshe, who will go over the congestion control. Uh, aspect as well as we have some results that we'll go over. Uh, what we are presenting here, it's not specific to UCX, but it does apply to when you are using UCX underneath your Rocky V2. This is more from the network congestion standpoint. So with that, um, as I said, first I'll introduce the problem statement and then we'll get into the congestion control. And we do have some uh, performance results here for the OSU benchmarks and some application will go over. So, so first, uh, just to level set on, uh, we, uh, we believe in ethernet and uh, with the current trends where ethernet is going, uh, the larger question is why Ethernet for HPC? And from where we are, we look at the fabric scale, the throughput uh, latency getting within 2X of IB latency, switch latency coming down. And with Rocky V2, you are using the same transport, uh, your API, same. And then Ethernet, with the IP traffic has built in the ECN based congestion control. So it's a uh, pretty much standard space. Uh, and the ecosystem here really is mature um, and it's all standard space. And ethernet, you, you can't go against ethernet. So from where it is right today with 100, 200 gig ethernet, it, pretty much meets HPC requirement. Of course, there may be room to further enhancements and we can talk about those in congestion control area and there are others. But this is uh, why we think and we believe the ethernet for HPC uh, has reached a point where it is meeting all the key HPC requirements. And then you can kind of deviate up into different parts of that with Rocky V2. So what we you get with Rocky V2, the high performance part from the throughput latency and packet per second coming into it. And then RDMA is naturally giving you the kernel bypass as well as if you use that with SRIV, you get hyper bypass. So that's uh, combining with that, uh, the offload piece gives you the CPU efficiency. And then, Rocky is building on the ethernet network infrastructure. So it is pretty much leveraging all, all the underlying infrastructure uh, on which traffic can run, uh, whether it's a Rocky traffic, Rocky combined with other network traffic. And congestion control uh, is not just for Rocky, but in general, ethernet uh, fabric with IP traffic on it uh, has built in uh, mechanism both in switches and end station to do the end-to-end -end congestion control. So that kind of helps with the deployment of Rocky. Um, and then if you look from the software side, the infrastructure, uh, which is in place, the previous talk we were talking about RDMA core, um, on the Linux side, you have the driver model, the verbs layer, uh, higher level APIs at the MPI, UCX, those are all in place uh, for Rocky V2 uh, to be taken advantage of. And then community continues to do more additional application offloads being added to that, um, that helps with the performance. So this is uh, basically, if you look at those four quadrants, if you add them together, that's where Rocky V2 for HPC currently stands. So when, with that, what, what we look, when we started a uh, long time ago, looking at all these applications, we, of course, MPI is widely used in 
HPC and AI machine learning kind of applications. Uh, and the scales vary depending on what application, but it can go into hundreds of processes per node and thousands of nodes in a cluster. And generally the topology for communication is logical uh, and it depends on what app it is. But the selection of that depends on the app and the underlying libraries. And those kind of logical topologies, when you map that to underlying network, which may be, you may have a simple uh, network, single stage, multi-stage, clause. Um, so what happens is those logical topologies, when they're mapped to underlying network infrastructure, whether these are application communication or collective communication, that can create congestion in the network. And there are, uh, when multiple sources going to a destination, that, that's an, an example of uh, congestion can happen in the network. So when this kind of congestion happens, uh, some of the initial deployment of Rocky, <clears throat> they were with PFC without congestion control. There are several challenges with that. So PFC gives you the lossless service, but it comes uh, at a cost. PFC is primarily point to point protocol between two ethernet endpoints. And when you start looking at from switch server and switches to switches, what happens is that kind of architecture of point to point naturally results in congestion spreading, which impacts uh, the flows or nodes which are not even participating or not contributing to the congestion. So that's an issue. Also, other issue you have is we, when you have slow receivers, um, your PFC environment can result into PFC strong where PFC gets asserted, receivers uh, catch up again, they become slower than, and then this can result in, result in PFC storm, which can basically make your network utilization uh, pretty low because if you are spending significant amount of time into the PFC uh, uh, where you are being paused uh, and then you go back and then again being. So th those kind of PFC storms are not uh, good from the performance standpoint. And then lastly, there are scenarios where just having PFC only deployed in the network, uh, you may end up having a transport live log where two of the nodes waiting on each other to um, basically unblock uh, are now stuck with having flow control both. And this can happen at two switches in the middle uh, or at the higher layer. So those kind of, there are some examples uh, and published papers of what kind of transport live logs can happen. So all of this together basically makes just having PFC only without any congestion control, not really a deployable solution for large scale deployment. So with that kind of introduction to the problem statement, what we'll spend the rest of our time in this talk is on going over the congestion control scheme and then how it helps, we'll present some results. Uh, let me hand it to Moshe. Moshe, do you want me to, Share and you will talk, or do you want? Yeah, to share? sure, sure. Let's go on with that. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, focus uh, of the discussion is the, to emphasize some of the points that uh, brought up by, by Hamal. Uh, the uh, congestion control in Rocky V2 is defined by the startup as uh, uh, using the uh, uh, ECN marking, which is uh, supported by basically all uh, switches in the market. Uh, where the IP header is marked when uh, the uh, egress queue on a switch is uh, crossing some threshold and the threshold can be specified in the setting of the, uh, of the network. Um, the uh, congestion control with, uh, without a PFC uh, can also be sufficient uh, for uh, many workload, workloads. This is where the congestion control is enabled and there is no uh, PFC in the network. PFC is not enabled, not by switches and not by 
uh, by Nix, and we're going to demonstrate some of the results we got uh, at the scale that we tested uh, for these. Um, the uh, congestion control uh, will, um, if, if effective, will address the limitation uh, that could be caused when uh, a PFC uh, alone is enabled uh, by uh, reducing the uh, buffer uh, accumulation, the buffer usage in the switches uh, and reducing, the, reducing significantly the likelihood that a PFC will uh, spread from uh, one switch to another uh, because the congestion control will react uh, uh, much before uh, this kind of thing uh, is happening. Uh, one of the things that we focus on is providing a congestion control uh, algorithm that is based on DCTCP uh, in the sense that it uses a deterministic rather than probabilistic marking uh, with a low marking threshold. And uh, this uh, can deliver a very uh, low end-to-end uh, -end latency even when there is a congestion in the network. Uh, and another aspect of that that is less uh, is overlooked sometimes is the interference between different threads or different applications that are using the network, where if uh, uh, we let the uh, congested queue build up to a significant level, uh, then there could be significant interference, significant impact on latency that uh, uh, victim flow uh, will experience trying to traverse the network through the congested queue. Uh, so this is uh, one of the uh, emphases um, that uh, we have uh, both in the design of the congestion control and in the um, what we look for in the in the benchmark and some of the benchmarks result that we're going to show today uh, will uh, present uh, the effect of uh, the effectiveness of, of of congestion control with the low marking threshold uh, let's go on to the next slide then uh, uh, we have uh, ran a very large number of uh, a different benchmark. benchmark. Uh, they include uh, micro benchmarks such as the OSU benchmark, the Intel MPI benchmark, and the GLUE benchmark, as well as uh, application uh, benchmarks such as uh, WARF, weather forecasting, uh, molecular dynamics such as LAMPS, HPCG for uh, HPC application, uh, GPC net, and many more. Uh, today, we uh, for uh, uh, we present only a subset of the benchmarks that we ran. Uh, and we show the OSU benchmark for the, uh, some of the uh, particular tests that can create a congestion in the network, uh, the HPCG benchmark and the LAMPS. And uh, later on, we will look uh, more uh, uh, narrowly at what could happen in terms of interference uh, by using the uh, GPC net benchmark. So in any of this uh, benchmark, we, uh, we ran the benchmark in three different uh, configuration. Uh, those are, are highlighted at the bottom of the slide. Uh, they are PFC without uh, congestion control, uh, PFC with congestion control, and uh, also a congestion control without enabling PFC where the network is basically uh, lossy and we compare the different results. And the, in the benchmarks that we present today, as well as the other benchmark, we consistently see that at least at the scale that we ran the benchmark, uh, we uh, get very similar uh, performance results in, some, in terms of completion time uh, in all three modes. And we'll see some of that in the next slide. So the first slide is uh, an OSU benchmark uh, where we show here uh, two uh, results for uh, 32 nodes, a uh, uh, OSU benchmark, uh, the communication uh, collective, the collective communication is all to all. And in this case, we have uh, four processes per uh, node and we uh, see the charts for um, three iterations uh, in most charts, it's going to be three iteration where we have a 
the blue in uh, PFC without congestion control, the light blue uh, is PFC with congestion control, and the orange is only congestion control without uh, PFC. Um, this is, uh, two charts uh, demonstrate that for uh, all to all and I all to all, which is a non blocking version of OSU all to all uh, collective benchmark. Uh, we can see that the completion time, which is shown on the y axis, uh, is very uh, similar in all three modes uh, uh, to uh, uh, message sizes all the way to uh, one megabyte. The next slide. Uh, is uh, showing the HPCG uh, result, which is a, 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 a commonly used uh, a type of uh, computation by HPC applications, uh, where here we have the number of nodes on the y-axis and we, we show the scaling uh, depending on the number of nodes uh, for different uh, number of cores per node. So uh, the chart on the top, left is eight uh, processes per, per node. Uh, then on the right is uh, 16 processes per node and at the bottom is 32 processes per node. And we show the scaling uh, of the uh, HPCG uh, benchmark across a, a different number of nodes. And we see that the scaling is maintained and linear uh, in all three modes uh, in very much the, the same way. Um, and here we have, uh, again, slightly different colors, but the, uh, uh, the purple is PFC uh, without congestion control, the blue is PFC with congestion control, and the green is congestion control alone uh, without uh, enabling PFC, and all the way up to 32 nodes with uh, the specified numbers of processes per node, uh, we see a very uh, good uh, scaling with this benchmark. The next one is uh, the molecular dynamic benchmark. Uh, here we also compare it against uh, TCP, which show in uh, the color for TCP is the, uh, the gray, the gray one. Of course, uh, with TCP, there is a significant overhead on the CPU, as well as a higher uh, latency uh, in uh, processing uh, communications. Uh, and we see the significant uh, difference between uh, Rocky and TCP uh, in terms of the uh, percentage of the performance relative to uh, uh, running in a single node. So here, the x-axis uh, show the uh, total number of uh, processes uh, that we have. Uh, uh, sorry, total number of uh, nodes and uh, the, uh, the uh, percentage of uh, uh, scaling uh, with uh, in re relative to running the, uh, the benchmark on a single node. And by the way, uh, there are several specifics uh, related to the LAMPS uh, uh, benchmark. These are uh, having to do with the number of atoms that the benchmark is running over. So the basis here is uh, the 32,000 uh, atoms. And when uh, and the reference is running the 32,000 um, uh, atoms uh, on, a single, on, on a single host. Now, the, uh, ideally, when we uh, running uh, the application with a, a but, uh, multiplying the number of atoms, depending on how many uh, processes we have participating in the uh, in the op in the computation, uh, then we want to stay as close as possible to a uh, hundred percent relative to the re reference. Meaning that if we use four uh, x the number of uh, processes, we want to see close to four x uh, in terms of the performance. And here we see a very slight degradation from the 100% for uh, Rocky in all three modes. But uh, for TCP, of course, the degradation uh, increases uh, as we go uh, to, uh, to more nodes. 
Uh, the, the different tests here are uh, cryptic in terms of their names, uh, but that require uh, looking a little bit more into the LAMPS documentation. There are different type of computation. Uh, the tests are, uh, that are shown here are uh, LJ and EAM. And on the next slide, uh, we have uh, the similar test, uh, but for a scaled version of the test uh, in some of them, like the chain and chute. And again, uh, the, these slides they demonstrate the, uh, the efficiency in uh, scaling and running the application over uh, multiple nodes. Uh, to, uh, we don't show that here, but these uh, results can be compared relative to various uh, uh, scaling that uh, uh, appear on the LAMPS uh, uh, benchmark uh, results. Uh, they have tested LAMPS uh, with, you know, over different networks with different uh, uh, type of machines and different types of communication uh, devices and uh, the results can be compared uh, with that. But the, point, the main point here is to show that uh, one, utilizing Rocky have significant advantage over TCP, and two, that the uh, performance results we get here uh, are very uh, much the same for in all three uh, modes, PFC alone, CC alone, or congestion control alone, or both of them enabled uh, together. Um, next slide. So the next uh, benchmark is GPCNet is, uh, can demonstrate uh, what is the impact of uh, having congestion in the network on uh, other threads or application that do not contribute uh, to the congestion. So uh, the way that the GPCNet uh, benchmark is uh, built is a basically an MPI application running over the uh, uh, MPI library underneath, uh, and it uses uh, two sets of uh, tasks. One of them is called the test tasks, uh, and the other one is the uh, congestor task. 20% uh, of the processes or the nodes running the test task, and the first uh, on the first iteration of the benchmark, uh, they run only the test task and measure the performance of these tasks in, uh, the, in different metric, depending on what the, the type of the uh, task is. The task they use is all, re all reduce point-to-point -point latency and uh, neighbor exchange. And then they run the same test on the 20% of the uh, processes, but uh, at the same time, 80% of the processes on the network running a uh, congestor tax uh, of the of the all to all incast or RMA put and get operation. Uh, these congestor tasks will create congestion in the network. And now uh, the test try to find out what, uh, how the test task results uh, changes uh, when there is congestion relative to uh, when there is no congestion. And that basically give a measure of uh, interference. So on the next slide, we can see uh, the results for uh, these tests in terms of the distribution. And if we take, for example, the, uh, the top two charts on the left side, we have the all reduced latency uh, baseline. This is when the test tasks are running without congestion in the network. And we have the three modes uh, specified on the X axis, the PFC alone, the congestion control with PFC, named here CCPFC, and the congestion control alone without PFC, named here CC. And we can see that the distribution of the completion time is uh, pretty much uh, the same in all three cases. Uh, on the right side, we see what happened when we run the same test, but this time with a uh, congestion in the network, and we see how the distribution of completion time changes. Uh, what we see here is because uh, the congestion control algorithm that we use uh, maintain a very low Q level under congestion, then a, a traversing packets of, the, uh, of uh, the test task 
that does not contribute to congestion, they just happen to traverse the same path, uh, do not uh, suffer a significant additional delay due to the con congestion. Uh, they can traverse uh, through the congested queue pretty quickly because the queue is in the order, or order of a few tens of kilobytes. Uh, and uh, that's what we see on the CC, PFC, and CC on the right chart. However, when only PFC is enabled, a PFC uh, could result in the congested queue build up to a very high level, possibly uh, several megabytes. And when a victim flow uh, sent packets over the congested queue, this packet may have to wait behind megabytes of uh, packets that contributing to the congestion uh, until it can uh, exit the switch through this congested queue and uh, go to its uh, destination. And here we see that the distribution of the PFC is immensely higher than uh, when we enable, uh, relative to when we enable PFC. Uh, similarly, uh, another test uh, that is uh, demonstrated on the bottom is the point-to-point -point latency baseline. And again, on the left side, we see very uh, much the same distribution in all three modes when we run the test task alone, but when we introduce uh, congestion, the same thing happened again. Uh, and because of the very large queue buildup, uh, the uh, effect, the interference on the test task is uh, very significant. Now, uh, similar to that could happen if the congestion control algorithm is one that allow for congested queue to grow into significant uh, queue level, uh, uh, by, simply by the same fact that the uh, uh, victimized flows will have to wait behind many more packets in the congested queue until they uh, can reach their destination. The uh, last slide on this is just showing uh, another uh, measure, which is the bandwidth, and here as well, uh, here we want, uh, here uh, higher is better because we measure bandwidth and we can see that the distribution of bandwidth on the PFC is at lower level than the distribution of bandwidth uh, for when congestion control uh, is enabled. And again, uh, this is again due, due to the interference, uh, the uh, processes uh, cannot continue and send more traffic uh, if they did not see a uh, completion of uh, prior uh, uh, transfers. And therefore the overall bandwidth that the application can use out of the network is uh, reduced because of the same uh, phenomena. The table on this slide uh, show the measures that GPC net uh, using uh, and the measure is basically a factor uh, between the congested result and the uh, base result. And we can see uh, that for CC only or CC with PFC, uh, for the different tests, we have a factor of uh, roughly 1.8. Oh, would you like to join this meeting now? Uh, depending on uh, or up to uh, four, depending on which uh, test uh, uh, we run, uh, the, uh, the uh, particular, uh, particularly significant difference is on latency. And this can be seen on the uh, uh, two-sided uh, latency where for congestion, uh, the factor of, uh, uh, for congestion, when congestion control is enabled, the factor of congestion in the network is 1.2. 8x, but when congestion control is not enabled on the most right column, we see a factor of 120x in terms of latency. A similar uh, significant uh, difference is when we run a, a multiple or reduce and the completion time uh, factor due to congestion is about 1.5x when congestion control is enabled but could reach over a uh, congestion control is not enabled and only PFC is uh, used. Next slide.
so uh, to summarize this, uh, uh, hopefully uh, was uh, demonstrating uh, both the uh, uh, effect of congestion control and the need for congestion control, uh, even on a lossless network, uh, as well as the um, ability of the congestion control algorithm that we use on these devices to operate even on a lossy network. Now, the reason that it operates on a lossy network uh, so well is again uh, attributed to the fact that the, uh, the congestion control try to maintain a very low Q level. And when maintaining very low Q level under congestion, it means that a lot of the available switch buffer is free to absorb a significant incast. If uh, under congestion, a lot of the uh, buffer is used uh, uh, just to hold packets that contributing to the congestion on a steady state, then any additional incast could fill up the switch buffer very quickly and uh, result in having uh, drops in the network, drops by the switches. But when the Q level is at steady state is maintained very low, then uh, most of the buffers in the switch are available to absorb uh, incast <coughs> and uh, reduce the likelihood uh, for drops. So um, I think this uh, concludes the presentation. Uh, if there are any questions, I'd love to answer them. I see one question, what MPI was used uh, in this experiment? Uh, uh, we, we ran uh, with OpenMPI as well as with uh, uh, MVAPH. Uh, the one, the results that you have seen here uh, are, are with uh, MVAPH. <laughs> okay, do we have... Any other questions? Oh, Looks like not. Is somebody saying something? Sounds like not. All right, so that is the talks for today. Well, we... Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, we had some great talks today. Thank you to everybody that presented.